Do you like photography? Do you want to become famous by making prints? Well, here are five things you should know before you do a photography exhibit. Here we go. I'll calm it down a bit. It's not that serious. It's not that crazy. And I, I did five things because the reality is the list I'm gonna have is way more than five things, but five things is catchy, right? It's really also in no particular order um, as I'm shooting this video, but I am gonna make a list for you guys and I'll link it down below so you guys can have something to actually work by because I feel like if I would have had a list, it would have significantly helped me. So we're gonna start off with the five things. Here's number one. First and foremost, have your prints ready. I am only speaking from like a tiny ounce of experience right now, but the first thing I did when I walked into the gallery was talk to the director and she said, well, do you have anything for me? And I thought about it and I was like, uh, I think I have some stuff. Now, the reality is I definitely had some pictures and probably most of the pictures I had, I had already taken for this gallery. I just didn't know that they were gonna fit together well yet. But have them ready. Start thinking of your theme. Start thinking of how they're gonna fit together. Make sure that these photos are edited how you want them edited and you check them on a calibrated screen that's probably like really large. That'll just help you realize your vision a little better and you'll have comfort in knowing you've got exactly what you want. Lastly, have more than what you think you need. So when I talked to my gallery director, she asked me if I had like 15 or 17 images. So I put together a group of images of like, I don't know, it was probably 30. And then I cut it down to like my 15 favorite. And from there we chose seven that were like the images. Two, if you wanna do a photography exhibit, you're gonna have to make prints. Now, I mean, if you're doing fine art, of course you could use a projector or maybe a TV or some weird screens, but most people are gonna want prints or expect prints. So you're gonna need to find a printing service. I personally suggest trying to go local. I was able to get my pictures for cheaper and I made a good relationship so if my stuff sells and I need to restock, I can go back to them. Building relationships also leads to maybe cheaper prices, if especially you're able to find a local printing shop. You also get to feel the print, you get to see the material, depending on what kind of printing materials you wanna use. For me, when I went to my local print shop, I know this is really weird, but I was also able to see the back of the printing paper. I'm just particular, so I wanted the back to not have any like weird logos or anything. And I was able to find a good solution for something that would have otherwise bothered me. Now, if you don't have a local printing place, I suggest Printech. It's by Adorama, I believe. Um, I really like their stuff. I've used them. Um, I think their quality is great. The only problem is your cost is gonna go up. Now, it's probably gonna go up by about half, depending on what size your photos are. And I suggest buying at least a hundred dollars worth otherwise it may not even be worth it because you'll end up paying even more in shipping than your actual prints for me the reason why i didn't use them again and i did go local on this shoot was because again i wanted to find something a little cheaper and i also needed these photos really quick and the shipping to get it in like two days was 
plus a hundred more dollars. It was something crazy. It was a lot of money. The shipping cost would have outdone my print cost by a lot. So try to find local if you can, but Printech, great service. I'll also link them down below. And if you do go online, please call, ask questions, ask about the different kinds of paper, luster, matte, sheen, I forget what it says, the shine, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but ask them about all your options and what you're looking to do. They can really help you out. They are gonna know a lot more than you do. Three, I know this is gonna sound weird, but have a layout in your mind. This kind of goes with the theme of your photos, but really try to have something laid out in your head or draw it out. There are actually apps, and I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm sure I could find some. I'm sure you guys could find some if you wanted that like help you decorate rooms or help you lay out pictures. Try to find something like that so you can actually have a good layout in your head. That way, when you actually come into the studio, you're going to be able to get everything up as quickly as possible. The reality is, the quicker you get your stuff up and it's not an incomplete mess, the quicker people will be able to appreciate the images. Now with that layout, I always suggest obviously look around the gallery. You're gonna wanna look at the wall you're specifically gonna be on. If that's available, great, take a picture of it. Kind of make a vision board off of it. Also look at the other artists around you. You're gonna catch a vibe of what's in that gallery. And so maybe you wanna be different from everybody. Maybe there's kind of a theme going on. At the gallery I'm at, it is definitely more local based. And so you see a lot of local themes. I live on a peninsula by the ocean. So there is a lot of ocean, a lot of water based and beach based stuff. And I wanted to fit into that realm, but give it my own kind of twist. So that's what my photos do. They're locally taken, but they represent my style at the same time. Prints aren't free. A gallery isn't free. Doing a photography exhibit is not free. You need to get the prints printed, which costs money. You need to get frames for your prints. You need to have supplies to hang. You need to look into any potential gallery fees. And you need to see if you're gonna be paying a fee after your painting or your photo is sold. These are all things you need to account for, especially when you're looking into the pricing of the photos that you wanna post. On top of the other photographers in your gallery. You don't want to come in with like this insanely expensive price and not realize that your market just isn't gonna support that. On the same end, you don't wanna cheapen the photographs in your gallery either. That would really suck if you have some really good photographs and then the guy next to you also has some good photographs but yours are like 100 to $200 cheaper. Try to make a good baseline. Now I know that may not sound fair sometimes, especially when you think about the work you put into the edit, the kind of camera you have, the kind of, I don't know, time you spent even getting the shot, going to that location, but really try to gauge what you're selling up against. Try to be fair, try to work together with people. Lastly, and this one is super important, give yourself the right amount of time. Um, I approached this gallery probably two months before I was told that I could even have an exhibit in there. And I floated the idea to the gallery director, but it, it took a while for everything to sink in and land. In my head, I was already planning, but the problem was I hadn't physically done any work or any real research into how I was gonna pull this off. And so 
with two and a half weeks notice, the gallery director was like, hey, we've got an opening. We've got a show April 1st. Can you do it? And my first thought was, nope, nope, that is not going to happen. There are so many thoughts in my head of how am I going to get this done, logistical stuff, cost, just not really knowing much about it. But out of instinct, because I've kind of forced myself into really trying to get this done this year, I said yes after I told her no. And in doing so, it really challenged me. I got everything done in the two and a half week mark. It was really pushing it, but I found a local printer. I found where I needed my frames from. I got all my frames from Ikea. They're not that expensive. And I was able to stay in my budget. And a lot of the people at the gallery were able to help me understand how to hang stuff. I was able to find what expectations were for the gallery by talking to different people. And end of the day, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, picture right here. Yeah, like I said, guys, I, I don't think it's that hard to do, but there is planning to doing this. And so I am gonna make that list and I'll put it below again. That way you guys can really see it. And uh, if you're interested in it, I think I can like make a link so you can download it. I'll figure that out. But yeah, go ahead and uh, leave comments down below if this was helpful. I got a new little setup right here. This is still a part of my house, but I want to try something different, especially for this series. Um, I've been wanting to make a video on the actual exhibit and I am going to do it. I just need to actually like figure out how to film it. That's it. I don't want it to be boring. I'm really stoked that I was able to get that. And also on that note, since I am done really preparing for that exhibit and everything's kind of running on autopilot at this point, I need to start making my photographs or constructing, like actually getting my ideas out down onto paper for my next exhibit which fingers crossed like end of this year, beginning of next year. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys so much. You guys have an awesome rest of the day and I will chat with you later. Now, for those of you who hung around, I am thinking about doing live videos, like streaming on YouTube. Tell me what you think. If you're interested in that, tell me what you think. I know the people at the end of the video are the only people that are really interested in that. Let's figure it out. Let's do it. I went live the other day and I loved it. Now peace. See you later.